So good evening to your pedagogy students and welcome to the last video in our series, How to Teach the Skills. Today, how to teach writing. So let's start with a quote. The scariest moment is, your, is always just before you start, Stephen King. You know how writing can be a little scary and a little daunting, but anyway, it is one of my most favorite skills. So let's get started. First of all, what do you think is the difference between product writing and process writing? So please stop the video and take some notes on your notebook. Okay, are you ready? So let's compare. In process writing, we have stages. In product writing, we focus more on a single product, on the production of a specific kind of text. So, um, as you can see here on the picture, we have, for example, the parts of an opinion, introduction, reasons, conclusion, etc. So, uh, product writing is going to invite us to focus more on the final product that we are going to produce. On the other hand, process writing makes us consider the different stages that there are in order to produce a text. However, we will go more in depth into each, into each two throughout the video. So, ready, set, go. Product writing um, is a very interesting kind of writing. It also connects to writing genre. So, can you please stop the video and write your own concept of genre writing? Okay, are you ready? So as you can see in the image, in genre writing, we can write different types of texts. So let's see, what kind of text can we write? Or what kind of genres can we teach uh, our students? What do you think? So let's stop the video and take some notes. All right, so the writing genres that I have thought of are advertisements, compositions, cards, letters, and emails. Essays, there are different types like problem solution essay, compare and contrast essay, or argumentative essay, etc. Creative writing, we have novels, novellas, poems, short stories, etc. And we can also have research papers. Any other that you have in your list that is not here, you might want to share with us. So when we look at, essential, uh, at genre writing, there are some essential features that we have to keep in mind. First of all, it is the context. It is not the same to write a formal letter than to write an email. Um, also, the audience is not the same to write an email to your teacher than to write it to your mom or to your friend. And then, uh, effective examples of writing in the genre. So, when we are looking at genre writing, we analyze carefully good examples or bad examples to avoid uh, certain pitfalls when writing. So, what are some common worries about the product approach? Usually, there is only one model. So, for example, there are textbooks that fall short into providing students with accurate models for genre writing. There is another worry or concern, which is uh, that students might become bad imitators of style. So, if you provide a model, then students will just stop producing and creating, and they will be just um, following the model, you know, like imitating the model. Um, then you have too much product, too much emphasis on product. There's usually little emphasis on process. So what can we do in order to fight these pitfalls? So first of all, we can offer students a multiplicity of uh, models, not only one, but we can give them more. And also we can provide them with feedback and analysis of genre to mix with process. So those of you who have taken English courses with me, you know that I do genre writing, but I mix with the with the writing process. So for example, in the compare and contrast essay, we did um, genre writing because it was a compare and contrast essay, yes, but we mixed um, with process writing through feedback and I'll show you the stages in a moment. So on the other hand, process writing is all about the different stages. So as you can see, it has a pre-writing stage, a drafting stage, a revision stage, an editing stage, and publication. And as you can see, this is a dynamic process. Yeah? So the price is in the process. Embrace it. It's pretty important. I like, in my opinion, I like um, writing process much more because you can um, see that writing is not some sort of inspirational activity that only a few people can do, but actually it's a craft that can be polished through time. 
So for example, this is an image that I love to share with everybody. Um, you guys know that I'm a Potter head. Um, I'm a big Harry Potter fan. And for example, JK Rowling, Harry Potter's writer, um, she outlines her texts. She plans her texts. And you know they are bestsellers. You know they're amazing. So if JK Rowling, someone with that expertise and that gift and magic can produce, I mean, does think that this is a good strategy in order to produce a better text, why do we feel that we have the capability to just sit down in front of the computer and produce masterpieces? Just food for thought. Okay, so let's do an activity. I'm going to um, try to take the microphone, the, the camera off for one second. Let's see. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so let's just put it on top of the little things right here. So um, what stage, at what stage in the writing process do you think they should happen? discuss what well, we'll discuss in class later so please uh, when do you think we should check language use grammar vocabulary and linkers in what stage of the writing process feel free to rewind the video and go find the writing process drawing if you haven't uh, done it in your notebook then check punctuation and layout when should we do that uh, check your spelling check your writing for a necessary repetition of words and or information decide on the information for each paragraph and the order the paragraph should go in Note down various ideas, select the best ideas for inclusion, write a clean copy of the corrected version, and write a rough version. So when do you think these activities should happen in the writing process? Stop the video, do the activity, we will check it in class. Okay, so considering um, the writing process and what we have seen in the different activities that you just did, which one do you think is more um, illustrative of the writing process. This initial linear process picture or this um, kind of more staged, more like a flow with some circling around here. So stop the video and write. I think it's the image on the right or on the left because X and Y. All right, so let's take a look at the stages of the writing process. This is my favorite part. So the first stage is called pre-writing. In pre-writing, we have two different processes that are brainstorming and outlining. So the idea of pre-writing is to pour out all of those ideas that you have in your head. Yeah, if you think about a topic, you're going to have tons of ideas and not all of them are going to be useful. So it's very important for you to bring out a piece of paper write things down and make them visible to you. Then you take a highlighter or some markers and you circle the ideas that you can you know, use in your text and then you outline them. That means you organize them. So first it's just free writing, you know, just kind of like uh, getting all of these ideas outside of your head and then you start outlining, which is organizing those ideas into um, structural format that is going to lay, then help you produce a much clearer paper. Then you have drafting. I love this sentence. First drafts don't have to be perfect, they just have to be written. So this is something really nice and really important. And it is that drafting is the most important stage in the writing process. Why? Because the first thing you have to do is just get that paper out. Don't worry about commas, don't worry about um, periods, don't worry about that specific word that you want or that you cannot remember. Just Organize the information that you have in your outline and start just pouring out as much as you can. Then there will be a time for you to make it perfect and make it better. So then we have editing. Editing is, you know, this exercise of um, making sure everything is spelled correctly, written correctly, not there's no uh, punctuation mistakes, etc. So we have another one, which is uh, revising. And I really liked this image that we have here because it shows us that revising consists on making it sound better and editing consists on making it look better. So if you have um, a text and you need to 
revise it. That means you need adding, changing, or deleting parts of the piece to help the writing flow, turning worn out words into vivid words, coming up with an interesting lead that hooks the reader and conclusion that sums things up, adding specific descriptions, explanations, and details, and organizing ideas in an order that makes sense. If you need to edit, on the other hand, is what we saw in the last slide. You change letters to capital or lowercase, you correct misspelled words, adding, deleting, or changing punctuation, indenting your paragraphs. I mean, revising and editing can be processes that can go hand in hand, but we have to carry out both. Yeah, anyway, the purpose of both is to help the reader read along smoothly, I'm sorry, and to improve the quality of the writing. So make sure that you become a reviser and an editor of your own papers. Then we have publishing, where is something, I mean, there's nothing better than write to be read. So you need to publish it somehow, not only give it to the teacher. So that's why some teachers, we use blogs, other teachers, we use uh, Facebook pages, you know, there are different ways in, in which we can publish our students' work. But as a student, also try to find ways to get it read by other people. So something important about the process of writing is if you do the paper the night before it is due, you cannot have time, you know, to do all this. Um, you are going to have difficulties to show, you know, um, you're going to have difficulties. Sorry, I just got distracted because of the camera. So you're going to have difficulties to perform all the stages of the writing process because they need time. Yeah, so it's very important that you plan correctly. So the day your assignment is, is given, start reading. Then um, the following day, do the brainstorming. After that, then do the outline and start with the first draft. Make sure you have at least two drafts that you can work on so that actually it makes sense and it makes for a better paper. Now, there is another option now that is writing collaboratively. So you don't have to write by yourself. Um, and when you guys have group work, my suggestion is don't just do this Frankenstein where you do one thing, you do the second, and the other one does the third. No, open up a Google Doc and everyone can get their hands on it. With the advent of technology and these 21st century skills, we need to collaborate we need to create together and also when you are teachers make sure you offer this opportunity for your students now there are websites like wikis there are google docs that are different things that you can do with them in order for them to practice their writing collaboratively so something important about writing is that you have to build a habit this is not something that happens overnight this is something that you build and you help your students build so for example in my class i'm trying to do 10 minutes of writing a day every day something silly like what is on the window uh, tell me your opinion about fish you know whatever um but it's important that they do every single day you know make sure that you generate opportunities for students to learn from what they write not only to write to show what they have learned you know so writing is a process and it can be improved and another important thing here is the role of the teacher so we can put my face on this little lady over here so the role of the teacher is very important because it's the role of a motivator a resource and a feedback provider so as a motivator the teacher shows the students how important it is to write for daily life and how useful it is also as a resource, when you do writing workshops and when you present opportunities for your students to write in class, um, then you can become a resource that is available to help with grammar, with vocabulary, with other different things, with like mechanics, punctuation, so that students don't feel lost and blocked at the moment of writing. And also you are a feedback provider. There's nothing more important in writing than feedback. Why? Because that's how you improve. That's how you know whether you have accomplished the goals or not. So provide feedback to your students always. Give opportunities to them. And remember, as I said in class, this is not a matter of, you know, just uh, watching one video and then you'll be a master of teaching whatever. No, you have to go in depth and you have to look for different books um, that are going to help you expand your knowledge. So remember, any, any book in the Jeremy Harmy series on how... Um, Jeremy Harmer, sorry, how to teach English or the how to books is great. Also, you can have Penny Ers, you can have um, H. Douglas Brown, Jack Richards, etc. So make sure you look for the information that you like, make sure you expand on the skill that you want and enjoy, enjoy teaching writing.
So thank you very much and see you later. Bye.